Hi, welcome to Ride Alongside. For this week's tip of the week, I'm going to talk to you guys about heart rate monitors. So, this is a heart rate monitor chest strap from Garmin. It uses the Ant Plus radio frequency. See the little Ant Plus icon right here? And it takes a little uh, CR2032 battery, which actually lasts quite a long time in here. So, there's a few different types of heart rate monitor straps. This one's kind of the uh, long plastic version. You want to get these uh, sensors right here wet before you put them uh, on your rib cage. Um, and there's uh, other types too that are like more of the fabric straps, uh, which I tend to prefer a little bit more. This one's from Timex, and it also uses the Ant Plus. Um, signal and those work with uh, the Garmin e-trex. Uh, Garmin e-trex communicates with the Ant Plus um, radio frequency as well but they also communicate with some phones out there and other devices. Um, I have a Samsung Galaxy S5 phone and it communicates with that. I know there's a lot of other phones out there that do but they also make heart rate monitors uh, with Bluetooth capability. So most phones have Bluetooth capability. There are some issues with using like Bluetooth headphones and a Bluetooth heart rate monitor at the same time, stuff like that. So you guys are gonna have to do your research if you wanna use a bunch of different devices and figure out if they're gonna work together um, when you are riding your mountain bike. Um, but the reason I'm recommending a heart rate monitor for this week's tip of the week is because they have helped my mountain biking tremendously over the last five to ten years. Um, I initially just used them to get an idea for you know what zone I was in and try to figure out you know how hard of a workout that was but over the last I'd say like two or three years I started using the um, Strava Premium uh, features that they have where you can upload your um, your track and if you've been wearing a heart rate monitor um, while you've been recording that track and you upload it to Strava using Strava Premium you can see what they have um, called fitness and freshness and that shows you a graph of where you are uh, in regards to where you've been and it um, gives you a number for your fitness and gives you a number for your fatigue and gives you another number that's the difference of the two and it's called the form and the form is basically if you're ready for a big ride I'd say or a race and the form number is a positive number if you're ready and your legs are feeling good and it's a negative number if you've just been hammering all week and or you've been out on a really hard ride and your fatigue level is just super high it's higher than your your fitness number and truthfully most of the time you're gonna want to continually keep your form around zero or negative if you want to keep getting stronger uh, that means that you're continually breaking down those muscles and giving them a hard workout and giving them just enough rest in between to build up again and then break them down so it means that you're working out a lot um, if you have a negative form number currently and I found that to be extremely valuable because I can look at the graph and see what it's going to be in a couple days if I don't do any rides and it's been really helpful if I've got a long ride coming up and I've just been hammering all week long on the bike and I want to make sure that I'm fresh for when that big ride comes. Um, I'm not doing too many um, big races anymore but I am doing big um, bike packing rides, endurance rides, all day rides and uh, I want to be ready for those. Um, sometimes I think, man my legs feel great. Um, my form is saying that I'm in the negative and uh, I don't feel like it. I'm going to go out for a long ride and see how, how I feel. And sure enough, 
I uh, get uh, deep into that long ride and my legs are just screaming at me and I don't have much left in the tank. So it's been real helpful for that and continually making uh, sure my fitness is getting um, stronger and stronger. Um, and it really shows when you're out on the bike. Um, you can see that you are stronger and the easiest thing to upgrade on a mountain bike is the motor. Uh, that is your legs, your cardio system, and being fit. So um, it's, it's the best improvement you can make. It's the least costly improvement that you can make. Um, it's a lot less expensive than buying a whole bunch of carbon fiber and new wheels and whatever else. Um, so get a heart rate monitor strap, get one that works with your phone if that's the way that you record your routes. Um, get one that works with your um, GPS unit if uh, that's how you record your routes. But give it a try. Um, you, can, you can try out the uh, Strava Premium and uh, see the fitness and freshness. I don't get a dime from Strava, so this isn't a plug for them, um, so I get a kickback. It's just uh, what I found works. So um, post up some comments if you guys have any questions. I actually use a program called Endomondo on my Samsung Galaxy S5 to record my track with my heart rate monitor, and then I export that and upload it to Strava because I found Strava's integration with the Ant Plus isn't quite polished enough yet. It's pretty good with the Bluetooth heart rate monitors, so you can give that a try, but um, with the Ant Plus, it just hasn't been there yet. They just released it not too long ago for Ant Plus, and that's the only kind of heart rate monitors I use because those are what work with my Garmin E-Trex 30. So that's what I currently use. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tip of the week. Um, and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Um, share it and subscribe if you found it useful. And uh, let me know how it's going with your uh, fatigue, your fitness, and your form on um, Strava. Hope this has been helpful for you guys. This is Nick from Ride Alongside, and that was your mountain bike tip of the week.